Hey everybody, welcome to Kids Coast. We kick off the new year in Matthew 22. The religious leaders were always trying to trap Jesus with his own words. This moment was no different. A law expert asked Jesus, out of the hundreds of laws they were to follow, which one was the most important? Jesus simplified everything and defined love as the top priority. Our most important responsibility is to love God and to love others as we love ourselves. Watch this. This week we're talking about responsibility while we take a look at the most important thing of all time. If you were a fish, which one of these would you choose? Hmm. Anyway, that's not the most important thing of all time. Hey, I'm Carter. And I'm Zeke. We're talking about responsibility. Which is showing you can be trusted with what is expected of you. I expect you're gonna tell me what these are about? Aquarium plants. Wait, you got a fish? I got a fish. For Christmas? Christmas will live on all year in my new ichthyoid friend. Ichthyoid means fish-like. Fish are super easy to take care of, right? I mean, aquarium, fish food, done. Yeah, that's what I thought. So it's not that simple? Let's just say that taking care of a fish looks a bit more like this. I can't even, you need all of this for one tiny fish? One tiny fish, AKA Finn. Finn, meet Carter, Carter, Finn. Finn, huh? Yeah, pretty good, right? Nah, but I see what you did there. What does all this stuff do? Oh, um, uh, 
Well, the water conditioner removes metals and chlorine from the water. And betas are tropical fish, so this guy needs a heater to keep the water warm. And of course, you've got to check the water temperature. Isn't that a meat thermometer? It works really well. But mom did use this to check some baked salmon the other day, so... That does not seem right. Finn is a super picky eater, so I give him blood worms as a treat. <sighs> but he is super cute. Aquarium test strips? Okay, see, this is the complicated part. It wasn't complicated already? When you first set up an aquarium, it has to cycle. That cannot mean what I'm thinking. The tank has to establish a nitrogen cycle. See, fish waste and extra food decompose, creating ammonia. Ammonia is poisonous to fish, but over time, good bacteria grow inside your aquarium. They break down the ammonia into nitrite and nitrate, which still aren't great for your fish. But when algae grows in your tank, it eats the nitrate as food. So how long does it take for this whole nitrogen cycle thing to work? Two months. Two months? How's Finn going to make it? Well, I gotta test for nitrogen and ammonia every day and do lots of water changes. That sounds like a lot of work. Finn is totally worth it, I think. Well, I certainly hope little fish face here feels the love. Speaking of love, it's time for... The Story Before the Story. Today, we're in the book of Matthew. Matthew is one of four books called the Gospels. These books tell stories from the life of Jesus. Matthew was written down by, you guessed it, Matthew, one of Jesus' followers, a tax collector whose life was turned upside down by his friendship with Jesus. When Jesus was about 30 years old, he began to travel from town to town, teaching and healing. Everywhere Jesus went, big crowds gathered. Some people were desperate to be made well. Others came to hear his teaching. But the religious leaders were troubled by Jesus and feared that he would change things. So some of the leaders tried to trap Jesus. They asked him trick questions, hoping to prove him wrong or stir up the crowds. But Jesus always knew the wise way to respond. Which is where our story starts. Hey, hey everyone, I'm Brian. So the religious leaders had become more and more worried about Jesus and his teaching. When Jesus entered Jerusalem to celebrate the Passover festival, great crowds welcomed him as a king. So those religious leaders began making plans to arrest him and uh, amped up their attempts to trick him. Who told you to do all these things? Yeah, what gives you the right? In every case, Jesus avoided their traps and gave wise answers. When one group of leaders failed to catch Jesus in his own words, another group, the Pharisees, decided to give it a try. One of their best law experts stepped up to test Jesus. The teacher, which is the most important commandment in the law? Ha! Whichever rule Jesus picks as the most important, he'll have to leave out the other 612 laws. Then we can get everyone mad at him for choosing the wrong one. Yes. I love it when a plan comes together. But Jesus just answered wisely once again. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. Love him with all your mind. This is the first and most important commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. Everything that is written in the law and the prophets is based on these two commandments. Okay, you see the amazing thing Jesus did there? He said that when you show love to God and show love to people, you will also be following all the other laws. If you love God and love others, you'll grow in telling the truth, in obeying your parents, in treating others well. Jesus didn't leave anything out. He included every single law in those first two. Love God, love others. It's that simple. But that doesn't mean it's easy all the time. See, God doesn't want us to just check off a list of rules every day. Hey, what do I do now? When we follow Jesus, God sends the Holy Spirit to be with us and guide us. Over time, we can learn to listen and discover fresh ways each day to love God and love others. There are unlimited ways we can do that. But here's a place to start. 
You can show love to God by spending time with God. You can read God's word in the Bible and tell God about all the great things and all the hard things in your life. One of the most amazing ways we can show love to God is actually by showing love to others, people made in God's very own image. You can show love to others by sharing what you have. And this might be your stuff, but it could also be your time, your listening ear, or your ideas and your creativity. You can show love by working hard to help others, your parents, siblings, friends, teacher, anybody you see who needs your help. You can also show love by using your words wisely to encourage others. Let's take a look at Jesus' words one more time. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. Love him with all your mind. This is the first and most important commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. Everything that is written in the law and the prophets is based on these two commandments. Just as Jesus said, when we focus on those two commandments, we can know that we are following all of God's laws. The end. Jesus made it so simple, but so not easy. Exactly. Being in right relationship with God isn't about a bunch of rules. So what's our part in the story? We're designed to need God, moment by moment, so we can discover what it looks like to love God and love others. There are several awesome ways to show love to God. The first is giving God your time. You can read God's words recorded in the Bible. And you can tell God anything that's on your heart or mind. You can even sing to God. Yeah, that's right. Another awesome way to show love to God is to love others. And this is where you have to really pay attention because <laughs> everybody's different. We all enjoy gifts, but some people feel extra loved if you make them a card or bake them cookies. Some people feel loved when you hang out with them and spend time doing their favorite stuff. For reals. My dad likes to fish, which is not my thing, but I do it anyway because I know it's super important to him. There's some people who feel most loved with a high five or a hug. And some people most need you to encourage them and say something you appreciate about them. There are also people who really feel loved when you do something for them. Like when you unload the dishwasher when it's your brother's turn. Or make sandwiches for dinner so your mom or dad don't have to cook. Just use your imagination. There's always some way that you can show love to God and to others. See you next time. So, here's the thing. Love God and love others. And love the creatures God made. Can we feed him again? No way, no how. But it was really fun to watch him slurp those worms up like spaghetti. Never overfeed a fish. But we can entertain him. Oh. With my new beta playlist. Thanks for joining us in the story lab. See, See you, you next time. Go fin. Look, he's wearing his fin. Yeah, look at is it fin oh, and fin? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You, see? you just got it? That's right. That's why you. Okay, now I see. Dear God, I know I'm supposed to be thankful for everything, but January, ugh, it's cold and dark, and it just seems like nothing fun ever happens. So when Mr. Park told me he was gonna be out for the rest of the month, and someone needed to get up early and make sure the front doors were unlocked, I started thinking who could do all that, and he said I should be the one. He picked me not only to open the doors, but to stay and greet everyone as I came in. He said I was a responsible guy, and he wanted to see me grow into this opportunity. I have no idea what he meant. All I knew is that in the worst month, I had to get up even earlier, take the key he gave me, open the door, and wait on people to get there. At first it was tough. I was sleepy. But after the first week, it got a lot easier. 
it turned out that the weather wasn't so bad. That one quiet kid turned out to be fun. His name is Benjamin. And I tried to help everyone else start their day with something good. It started to be fun. And even when someone's day started out bad, I tried to do whatever I could to get it back on track. Next week, Mr. Parks comes back. I'm supposed to give him the key back. But God, what would you think if I asked him to be the greeter for another month? Your friend, Dean. Who's my good boy? Who's my good boy? Do you want a belly rub? Do you want a belly rub? Ooh, does that feel good? <laughs> you want a treat? Who wants a treat? Oh, did you get a new pet? I did, I did, it's right here. You want oh, let me him? see him, let no, me see him. No, 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 wait, shh. He's really shy around new people. Can you just, you know, stay, stay still? Oh, like this? It's perfect. Ah, okay, here we go. John, ah, ah. I would like you to meet Dwayne. That's a rock. I know, I know, but it's a pet rock. His name is Dwayne. A rock cannot be a pet. Yeah, Dwayne is so a pet. No, he's he not. He is a pet. It's no, true. Yeah, no, no what does he, he is. Do then? He's a pet. What he? What does he? What does he do? He um uh he um. Okay, you ready? Here we go. Fetch. Go get it. I'll get it. Uh, come on. Come on, Dwayne. Uh, uh, stay. Stay. Here you go, boy. Okay, roll over. Roll up. Here we go. Wee. Wee. Come on, boy. Sit up. Sit up. Come on, boy. Up. Sit up. Sit. Up. Come on. Come on. Come on. Okay, you know what? Dwayne's not a pet. Good. Let's go get your real pet. Great. Welcome to the So and So Show. I'm Brandon. I'm John, and we're kicking off a discussion all about responsibility. Yeah, one of us had a brilliant idea. It was me to get a studio pet because one of the best ways you can show you're responsible is by taking care of another creature. Yes, my mother has let me know many o times that I can't even take care of myself. So this is my chance to prove I am responsible. The pet can be as simple as a snail or as demanding as a dolphin. I like it. The question is how do we find out which pet is right for our studio? And the answer, pet, pet auditions. auditions. All right, let's see who we have first. Okay, okay, um, first up we have Holly. She's three years old, she's 27 <laughs> inches tall and 5.7 pounds, and she's a chicken. <laughs> Her special skills are laying eggs, mm -hmm, doing the chicken dance, and, and doing the two wing cha-cha. Hmm. You, know, you know, chickens are in right now, especially with the price of eggs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, well, it says here that Holly is used to a 15 by 15 square foot living space and needs at least four or three other hens to keep her company. 15 by 15 feet? That's bigger than my bedroom. Yeah, and I don't know if I want to get four pets, so maybe we should, you know, pass on Holly. Okay, you tell her. Well, I'm not going to tell her, you tell her. Fine. Uh, thank you, Holly. We'll let you know. Thank you. Okay, smooth. Who's next? All right, uh, let's see. We have two-year-old Larry. Oh. He's five foot seven inches, and he weighs 320 pounds. Woo! Um, he's friendly, mild-mannered, and clean. Maybe you can learn a thing or two from him. Huh? Hey, hey. Uh, let's see, but he does have a tendency for spitting, kicking, and neck wrestling. Neck wrestling. That's what it says right here, neck wrestling. Uh -huh. And chew very loudly. It's not good for sound. No, it's not. Uh, you tell him. Oh, okay. Thanks, Larry. Thanks. You, you're, you're, you're a great llama. But hey, hey we'll let you know. Okay. Get another one. Uh, 
Yes. Okay. Um, oh, oh. <laughs> we have Sebastian. He's over three feet tall and weighs 423 pounds, and he's a tiger. No way. <laughs> now this is yeah. the perfect pet. Yeah, it says he's housebroken and he loves belly rubs, huh? Oh, uh, he's a cute little tiger. Oh, yes, he yeah. is. Ah! We'll let you know. It's Bible story time. Getting a pet, huh? Yes. Maybe. Yes. Maybe. Uh, just not a scary tiger. <laughs> well, getting a pet is a big responsibility. But as followers of Jesus, we have an even bigger responsibility. Want to know what it is? Do llamas make loud chewing noises? I'm going to say yes. Then take it away. Today's Bible story comes from the book of Matthew. Matthew wrote about a time when a religious leader was trying to test Jesus by asking him a question. And Jesus' answer to that question tells us a lot about what God expects us to do. Da -da 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 -da. Oh. Time for Bible sizing with Horvath. Oh, that must be. Whoa, Horvath. Hello, Horvath. Ah. Uh, Want to help me tell the story today? Yes, I do. Thank you so much for having me on your shows. I am Horvath, and I am an expert in combining the mental trainings of learning the Bible with the physical trainings of making a mosque bigger. <laughs> the way this works is I'll tell the story, and Horvath will give us some exercises to help us remember it. Yay! Okay, you say the Bible stories, I do exercise. All right, let's do this. Wonderful. Okay, so the religious leader came up to test Jesus, maybe even trick him. When he asked Jesus this question, which is the most important commandment in the law? Stop, first exercise. Okay, I call this curling the law. <laughs> and we need some special equipment for this exercise. We will be using the Understandings Corporate Law textbooks. Oh. <laughs> You first raise this giant book straight out in front of you before curling it back. Oh, working on those biceps. Then you straighten it back out. Why are you not exercising? Oh, I, I, I was watching. No watching exercise. Oh, sorry. All right, here we go. We do 29 of them. Go. Strudels. Door frame. Nakatomi Plaza. 29. All right, carry on with the stories. Okay. So when the religious leader asked what the greatest commandment was, he was trying to trap Jesus. If Jesus gave the wrong answer in front of all those people, he would look foolish. But Jesus actually had a great answer to the question. The greatest commandment, he said, was to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, love him with all your mind. This is the first and most important commandment. Hold your habeas corpus! <laughs> you know the exercise, head, shoulders, knees, and toesies? I, I know the song. This is not like that at all. This is called heart, soul, and mind. I put my hands on my heart, all right, before raising my leg to touch the soles of my feet. Then I drop my leg and I touch my head like I'm mind melding. We do 50 11s of them. Ready? Wait, 50 11s? Go! Oh, heart, souls, minds. One, heart, souls, minds. 47, hearts, souls, minds. Judge Watner, heart, souls, minds. Megaroon, heart, souls, minds. 50 11s! Well, that was. Chicken break! Mm -hmm. Ooh, pump the protein. <laughs> Well, you need those nutrients. Second break over. Okay, um, moving on. So Jesus said the greatest commandment is to love God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. Mm. Loving God is the most important thing we can do. But Jesus wasn't finished with his answer. There was a little more to it. Jesus said, and the second is like it. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. Everything that is written in the law and the prophets is based on these two commandments. Final exercise! It does a partner exercise. Oh. All right, and I call it neighbor, salt and shaker. You stand back to backs, oh. and then you link arms. Yeah, like this, yeah, yeah. And then one at a time you will lean over, pulling your neighbor off their feet. Okay. We'll do the three of these. Oh, just three? Uh, three is the new 78. All right, here we go. One, 
Oh. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh. Eggplant. Oh. Uh. Juice Newton. Uh. <laughs> Hernia. Oh. 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 I think I just gave my lumbar a lawsuit. Oh, okay. Uh, well, I'll finish up real quick. Okay, I'll move over here. <laughs> and, and yeah. <laughs> love God and love others. That's our greatest responsibility. Jesus said everything was based on those two commandments. That seems a whole lot easier than taking care of a pet. Yeah, especially pet tigers. Mm -hmm. It certainly is easy to remember, but sometimes loving others can be tough. But when we are followers of Jesus, we have the responsibility to love God and to love one another. Oh. Wow, are you okay? Yeah, I just can't move my back for three months, but I can still exercise my eyebrows. I call this the Caterpillar Crunch. Ready? One, two, cheese, floor. I'm sure he will be better the next time he's on. Now, nose flares! Back to mm. you. <laughs> mm. 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 Uh, you, you know, maybe we should rethink this whole pet thing and get something with a lot less expectations. Ooh, like... Dwayne! Yes, I thought we discussed this. Uh, rock is a very boring pet. Oh, yeah, but Dwayne is the most electrifying rock in show business! Reveal the question! Ooh. What are things you're expected to do? Well, growing up, I was always expected to tell the truth. Oh, that's a good one. Uh, I was expected to make up my bed and brush my teeth. Oh man, that would have been a good one for me. Which one? You know, don't answer. Uh, what are some things you are expected to do? Yeah, it could be at school, could be at home, or could be at a rehearsal or a practice. Yep, and with that, We'll see you next week for another brand new show. See ya! Along with Dwayne! Hey, everybody! What's your name? My name's Dwayne. Based on these two commandments. I can't get out of my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to do it so fast. I'm going to rock you. I don't want to roll. <laughs> Do you smell what the Dwayne is cooking? Not rock. I am an eye. What you looking at? Hmm. Wayne of Ages. <laughs> 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 All right, cut.
Wow, love God and love others. These are two simple ideas, but they're not always simple to put into practice. We hope that as kids discover more about responsibility, they'll start to understand the ways they can love God and love the people God has put in their lives. Well, friends, that's all we have for today. Please be sure to come back next week. And for more resources, please visit us at seacoast.org slash kidscoastathome. To find ways to get involved at Seacoast Church, text SERVE to 320-320. There are many opportunities for families to find ways to make a difference.